Our lesson comes from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 22. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of that place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed there was a ladder set up on earth, the top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lay. I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the, to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had and put it under his head and set it up for a pillar, and he poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the beginning. But then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give one-tenth to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. This stone, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be God's house. Now, Jacob's stone was probably a little bigger than this. It said he used it for a pillow. But it's such a bold claim. This stone will be God's house. And earlier he calls it the gate of heaven. The gate of heaven. What do you think the gate of heaven looks like? Probably not this. Maybe pearly, gold, wide, surrounded by clouds, hopefully open and not closed. St. Peter with a long beard and a list that you hope has your name on it. That's what I think of the gate of heaven. Probably none of us. When thinking about the gate of heaven, think about a single rock out in the middle of nowhere. Obviously, Jacob wasn't thinking of it that way either until he experienced something holy. Then he could see that a single rock out in the middle of nowhere could be the very gate of heaven. The difference 
in before when it was just a rock that poor Jacob used for a pillow and when it was the gate of heaven, a pillar for the house of God, the difference in before and after, a dream. A dream in which heaven touched earth. What about those times for you when it seems as if heaven touches earth? It's sometimes just for a moment. Maybe some of you today are thinking of something like or the very real friendship of Deanna Clark. One of the kindest, most generous people I have ever known and so well beloved. And that kind of friendship, when you meet someone like her, you feel heaven has touched down on earth. When you greet our own Linda Maxa, who very much like Deanna is again, one of the kindest, gentlest, most faithful people I know. When two weeks ago we were praying her through brain surgery and here she is and her numbers are better, and heaven touches earth. Sometimes it, it might be a, an experience when you can, you can feel God's presence. It might have happened here in this sanctuary on a Christmas Eve or a baptism or a service of healing prayer. You think about the birth of a child, the Miraculous recovery, Jackson's, of a fragile child. God touches down on earth, and it is real. You might think of a glorious place like the ocean and the way the vastness of the ocean comes and way in the waves that wash over us with something so powerful, or the mountains. When heaven touches down on earth, even for a moment, we know it. We remember it. We want to hold on to it forever. So, of course, when Jacob had his dream and saw the ladder and the angels ascending and descending, when he heard the voice of God, he wanted to mark that place. He wanted to remember he wanted to honor the holiness that had touched down in such an unexpected way, in an unexpected place. We have these experiences in moments, but sometimes, at least for me, it can be hard to really believe that God's holiness touches down on this earth when we see everything that is happening in this world? Do we really believe that heaven can touch down in the midst of everything on this earth in real and tangible ways? I don't know about you, but it is difficult or a, a challenge to preach about God's dream today after yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the attacks on New York and Pennsylvania and Washington, when nearly 3,000 people were killed, and many others have died because of the toxins, because they were part of the cleanup effort, or they clean in buildings nearby. When we consider that over 650,000 people in the U.S. alone have died from COVID-19, and still counting. These and so many other realities are overwhelming. The gift of our faith is that we know, and somewhere you wouldn't be here if you didn't believe, somewhere that God has a dream for humanity. God has a dream for us and all of God's children here and now on this earth. We pray it every Sunday. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All throughout scripture, God lays out the dream. 
from creation, where we're created to enjoy all that God has given, where we have all that we need, where we are in community with one another. It says it is not good that they should be alone. God saves God's people from slavery in Egypt because that's not the dream. Because the dream is that they would have liberation and not oppression and captivity. The prophets tell us about the dream over and over. Amos declares, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Isaiah Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill made low. The rough places shall become a plain. And Isaiah, again, the wolf shall lay down with the lamb, the leopard shall lay down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. God doesn't leave us without signs of the dream on and on throughout Scripture. Then God's dream touches down to earth in a very real way in the birth of Jesus. In his healing, his preaching, his forgiveness, and his resurrection. During Jesus' lifetime, heaven touched down to earth in concrete ways. Jesus affirms this through his very being in the way he touched people physically and through his preaching and through the miracles and showing us that God's dream for us on this earth is real. It's real in him. It's real in everything he says Good news to the poor, release to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers. God's dream is real. Hard as it can be to hold on to that, we seek him, we follow him, we believe in him. Somewhere that is in us that the dream is real. Even though we don't see it always when we look around. Jacob's dream is fascinating. We know the song and love the song. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Every rung goes higher, higher. But the dream doesn't just talk about going from earth to heaven. The angels are ascending and descending. It means heaven is touching down on earth in a concrete way. It's not all about going up, but about heaven coming down. And that is real for Jacob, not just in God's words, but in the way that the story continues that God is with him. And here's what, here's the promise. God's presence and God's blessing is real on this earth. Now that is a beautiful dream. Where the Twin Towers in New York used to stand tall, there is now a memorial. Some of you have probably been there. Instead of towers, there are descending waterfalls. Now sometimes, most often when we see a, um, a human created waterfall, it's, it's higher, right? And it comes down. But these descend into the ground rather than rising above. It's a hollow space surrounded by the names of the people that have died. There are so many ways that efforts at healing are being made. Some of you may have experienced them or know of loved ones who are. One of the most touching, I think, is that in the rubble, 
they found a very damaged but alive tree, a pear tree. And they took gentle care of it and nurtured it. And they call it the survivor's tree. It's still living and it's there on those grounds. And every year, they send seedlings of that survivor's tree to three places in the world that have experienced trauma and loss, a natural disaster, a school shooting. Similarly, there are countless stories, you may know them well, of how individuals, groups, businesses, faith communities responded in the midst of the disaster. One writer puts it this way, there was but a single act of evil that day, but there were thousands upon thousands acts of good, repeated in countless ways all over the city. And he says this about that, we have a duty, almost a holy responsibility. Here we can say it is a holy responsibility. To record and honor the victorious weight. I love that. The victorious weight of these immeasurable little kindnesses. And when an unprecedented act of evil so threatens to distort our perceptions of ordinary human behavior or to distort our perce- perceptions, I would say, of God's dream and the way it can become real here on this earth. So no matter what happens in our lives, in our world, how will we be part of God's dream? Even in the face of a nightmare, even in the face of terrific destruction, how might we dare to dream God's dream for the world? One pastor prayed in the aftermath of that terrible event, let us not become the evil that we deplore. God's dream resounds also in the Psalms, seek peace and pursue it. If you were to throw your stone into that fountain, the hollow space in the ground where the sight of so much pain, there, th- that is one poignant physical space, but, but our world is that too. If you were to put your stone in those fountains or in the middle of nowhere like Jacob, or in the midst of the landscape of a pandemic, or war, or violence, or poverty, or the need of your neighbor, if you could put up a pillar for God in our local community, where there are people hungry for food, for community, for hope, and on and on, what is God's dream in the midst of all of these things? If your stone is one tiny gateway of heaven, one way that heaven touches down on earth, what does it look like? Where will you place it to mark and to act and to participate in heaven touching down on earth? How are you, how am I part of God's dream? God has a dream for us here and now on this earth. We may not be expecting to see it. We all can lose hope at times. It may come in a place where we least expect it. And today, as we begin this, these weeks of talking about daring to dream, And what is God's dream? And how does God's dream become real in me, in you? How does God's dream become real in us as a church? We have a small rock for each of you. They're laid out here on the altar. 
And we want to invite you to pick it up during the music after the sermon, or if you would rather, on your way out, and take it with you like a prayer, like a touchstone. It's something so ordinary. I mean, remember Jacob used it as a pillow, as a pillow. Think and pray about God's dream. What do you hear and see? What do you hear through Scripture? What do you know from the times when you have experienced heaven touch down on earth and it was and is real? So as we talk about God's dream and pray about it and reflect on it and how it's real in each of us and how it's real in us as a church and how we can make it real in this world. May your rock become a pillar for you. In the midst of the rubble of life, we have the chance to make a pillar, to make a sanctuary. It may be only one small rock, one small symbol. But may our offering be that which fulfills God's dream in a real and concrete way. It may be the very pillar for the gate of heaven, yes, even here on this earth. So we invite you to come and Take a rock, put it in your pocket, put it in a place where you will see it, where you can touch it. Because you too, us too, all of us can set up a pillar where God touches down on this earth in very real ways.